follow up on your gut and you know whether it's in that moment or it's a text later as a phone call and say do you know what earlier on you said you're okay but actually you know you you don't seem yourself are you sure you're okay do you want to talk about anything and giving that person that opportunity in, in a workplace environment especially stressful workplaces you know, at a time appropriate obviously moment that can be really that can be massive for someone because you might if i get what i want it's going to be amazing if i don't it's going to be even better where's the pressure there's no such thing where's the fear of failure there's no such thing as failure when you understand that real challenge is what triggers um deeper uh, shifts of of revealing potential then you want challenge more than you want success i really just had to hang on in there and try and find ways to manage my thoughts and my emotions so that they didn't overwhelm me and i think the most important thing that i learned was to break down this massive challenge i ended up rowing a total of 15000 miles and i really just had to break it down into one day one rowing shift one mile at a time or and so now they have life coaches they talk about mental health and it's just so much more refreshing to hear i mean i was very very stressed at valley when i look back when i was going through that final stages and i'd failed a couple of trips and you know, I wasn't eating, I wasn't really sleeping, I had skin rashes all over my body and I went to the doctor and I said, you know, I've got all these skin rashes everywhere and they, he just simply said, have you changed your washing powder? It's not uncommon for me to cry. Uh, don't go telling anybody Marine to cry, right? <laughs> but I've not got a problem with showing my vulnerability and connecting with an audience. I like to stimulate hearts and minds. So if you're a business and you want to support your employees with mental health, make sure that you're doing at least something. And, and there's lots of information out there about the free stuff you can do, the pledges you can do, the manifestos you can support. Just to say like, you know, this is a topic we should be talking about. We may not have it perfect, but we're just going to allow the discussion to happen. You know, you're really, really not alone. I thought when I was uh, really unwell, when I was in hospital with, with my mental health, I, I just thought I was the only person that was kind of my age, I was 20 at the time. I thought, you know, what other 20 year old is going to be really unwell like this in, in a psychiatric hospital? And um, then I started getting out there and working in mental health and realizing that I definitely wasn't alone, you know? You know, when I look at the points in my recovery where things could have gone, you know, terribly wrong with my mental health, I, by, I think by accident, did the right things. And that was mainly through my openness and my honesty, my ability to uh, vocalize what I was seeing, how I was struggling, not even necessarily ask for help, but just say it to people in a manner where they could offer help or they could at least just listen. Yeah, and understanding the people around you and having people that you can trust, you know, maybe testing people out a little bit with what you say and see what their reaction is like whether it how that makes you feel um, and if it doesn't make you feel great I, I wouldn't particularly carry on um, opening up to that person but whereas when it comes to your initiatives and how you're taking action your values will show your values will speak for themselves people will know what your organization is about by the action that you're taking so when things go wrong I will think about that and at first um, I will always start with I will allow my normal human emotions to come out because I think that's important and then when I've allowed that I start to really think about what's happened and after eight days I came out of this coma to look down in the bed and see that my legs were gone I can't really describe to you how I felt at that moment but I pretty much felt like my world had ended. I just couldn't believe that out of the millions of people that travel on the London Transport Network every morning, I was the most injured survivor. Um, it just seemed so unfair. His life is 90% is mental and 10% physical. It doesn't really matter how physically fit you are um, and strong you are, if, if you're not you know, there mentally, if you don't believe in yourself mentally, um, then I, I personally believe that you're never gonna achieve your full potential. It's about taking the short-term discomfort for the long-term gain. The trouble is, we're, the way we're wired, we're wired to take the short-term comfort, which leads to long-term pain.